Hi everyone, it's Jessica. It's great to see you again. Today I am going to be renovating our pantry screen door. It has held up really well over the past three years, but it's ready for a new look. Some of the paint has chipped off in some of the areas and it's looking a little bit more ratty. I'm eager to give it a new distressed vintage look. So let's get started. Okay, so now I have taken the door off of the hinges and I have placed it on this table and I'm going to begin removing the screen so I can paint evenly around the frame. Okay, so now the screen is completely off of the door and I can begin painting. So the trick here to create an aged look is going to be paint layering. I'm going to use several colors. I'm going to use four colors and see how that goes. And I'm going to play around with them to get just the right texture and just the right feel. So I have chocolate swirl as one color. It's a really pretty chocolatey brown. And then I have one of my favorite greens to work with. This is by Bear. And by the way, I make all my chalk paints. I know I say that all the time, but that's what works easiest for me because they last a long time and I love the recipe that I use. I'll put a link to it. But anyway, this green is called Boreal and I'm almost empty, but it's really pretty. It's a like a rich mint green. And then I have one of my favorite whites, which is called Weathered White. It's kind of a linen-like farmhouse that has settled, but you can see kind of a little bit around the inside of the can what that white looks like or on the lid here. It's pre very pretty. I think that's going to work well with one of the layers. And then I have just a little bit of my Annabelle in Blue by Dixie Belle, and it's a very pretty teal color. So let's get started with our painting. So I'm going to start with my chocolate swirl. Make sure I mix it up really well in case any of it has settled. And I'm just going to begin applying that in just any random fashion because these are going to be just layers underneath. It doesn't really matter how uniform they are. Just going to get that all over my frame here. And it is important to use chalk paint when working on something like this because this kind of is a vinyl or a fiberglass door. It isn't really wood. So regular paint, latex paint might not adhere as well Already the chalk paint is struggling a little bit with adhering. So that goes to show you, you're going to need to work with the chalk paint, something with friction, definitely, to make sure that it's not later coming off. That's the problem I had with the original paint I used is, I don't think I used chalk paint. It's been a while, I can't exactly remember, but it did start coming off after a while. So it gets a lot of traffic and you wanna make sure that you're using paints that adhere well. Okay, so I am coming to the conclusion of one side of the door with the coverage of the brown. And this is just a sloppy job. Like, don't worry about it looking perfect, like I said earlier, because this is going to be layers. And also, leaving some of the colors blotchy, it's going to add more character and texture. So I just want to show you real quickly here how things are looking. So here we go with the first coat of the brown. And again, it doesn't look like much right now, but it's going to get better as we go. I'm going to show you how the layers come to life. Now I'm going to continue with my next color, my Antebellum Blue by Dixie Belle. And for this layer, and the next layer, I'm just going to sporadically do it in spots, just random, because these are just colors that are going to be underneath and not a full layer. So we are creating texture and dimension by making this just kind of blotchy. It really does not matter. You really cannot make much of a mistake here. Just going to go around in some places I'm going to just kind of hit the brush and in some places I'm going to make longer strokes. And around these details, I'm also going to use this teal color 
to just add another level of color. Very, very easy, you guys. This is, I know, looking pretty messy and silly, but we are creating a look, and this is the technique that we use for paint layering. So it's fun, and it does have an end goal. Okay, so this is what the door is looking like with the teal and the brown looking all very blotchy, but really starting to come together with that rustic vintage look. Now we're going to use the weathered white, which is an off-white color. And I'm going to go a little heavier with this, but still as a layer. So dry brushing, no water being used to apply this chalk paint. I'm really just trying to go lightly with my brush over the surface, trying to just kind of pull everything together. So while still leaving some of the colors underneath exposed, but pulling everything together a little bit more cohesively with this color, if that makes any sense. So what I'm doing here is just going lightly without reapplying more paint over this painted area of brown and teal. Let me show you on this side. So again, just a little bit of paint on your brush and we can use both vertical and horizontal strokes. I'm going parallel over the surface in this direction first. You can see my brush is just going parallel over the surface and then I'm going to go horizontally to kind of remove any brush strokes. You want everything to blend in. You want the strokes to blend in, but don't worry if you see brush strokes because first of all, that's part of the look. And second of all, this is still an under layer. So we're still going to have a top layer that's going to make everything much more uniform. But see, this looks really pretty, really multi-dimensional and a lot of rich texture because of the layers that we are creating. That's the effect that it gives. Hi everyone, it is the next day and the door is looking really fabulous. I'm loving all the character and the color layers. It's really looking antiqued. Let me show you real quick. See how beautiful all those colors and textures are coming through. I just really like how it's looking, but we are not quite finished. We have one more final layer and I'm going to show you, I made a decision and I actually changed directions in my color and decided on one change. Remember I had shown you that really pretty mint green boreal, the boreal color? Well, that is no longer going to be my final color. I've switched now and I'm going to be using this gray. It's actually called Gray by Bear, which I have also made into chalk paint. It has a little bit of a taupe tint to it. It's a light, beautiful gray. And that is going to be our final top coat on this door. The reason why I changed my mind is because I tested it out on a sample area and I looked at how all the color schemes were looking in my home and it didn't quite harmonize the way I wanted it to. So you always want to double check and make sure that everything is looking good with the palette you have in your decor. Let me show you how we're going to apply it as a final layer of this technique. Okay, so we're going to start again with a little bit of paint on our brush. Remember to always take it easy when applying your paint with this technique. And I'm going to do the similar technique that I've done on the previous layers where I'm just going flat with my brush over the surface of the frame of the store. And look how wonderful this is combining this topish gray over the colors. And I'm just going to keep doing this until I like the amount of gray over it. I'm not completely covering the colors below, but I am toning down the other colors because I don't want this huge level of rustic aesthetic. I just want it a little bit coming through the texture. This is the look that I'm going for in this part of our house, but definitely you can leave you could even stop at the third layer if you wanted that amount of variety in your colors. It's really a personal choice. And so I'm just working this until I like the amount of exposure of the other colors. But look how pretty that is. 
So let's continue over here. I'm going to show you a little bit more of this technique. Again, just kind of lightly brushing it, making it airy, applying a little bit of pressure, not too much. If you want it darker, you just go back and forth over it or you apply some more pressure with your brush. You'll get the swing of it as you are manually feeling what you're doing. But I just really think this is beautiful. It makes it look old. It also gives it texture. I love paint layering. I love the different results you can get every time because it is so unique depending on how you applied each layer and just the variety and everything you used and how you applied it. So I really, really love this. It's going to look amazing hung up and you see the difference already. So, so you're not removing your layers. You're not removing the colors underneath. You can still see hints of them, but it's more toned down than for example, this side over here where we only have the brown and the teal and the white. This gray is kind of blending everything, pulling everything in cohesively. And I really, really like those results. It looks very cottagey, very farmhouse. And I think it's going to look amazing when it's all finally done. So I'll be back to show you the end result. So I hung the door and I was looking at it for about a day and I realized it was missing something. And this often happens when I do some type of renovation. I get it finished and then it's not quite like I want it. So what I did was I started adding a couple more layers of colors. I added a little bit more of the green, of the teal in blotchy parts and just kind of using the brush to bring out the texture. And then I added a little bit more of the brown. Everything got blotchy again. And then I decided to add some cracked patina. I love this product because it transforms the surface into something beautifully distressed and cracked. And it was that missing layer of texture and depth that I needed. So I apply the cracked patina like I do paint. Once the paint colors were dry, the brown and the teal, then I started applying the cracked patina and I let it dry. And after it dried, then I came back over with, again, my gray paint, just a little bit over, just enough to get the crackling effect. And then with my brush, I would go parallel over the surface and tap over the painted areas and it would peel off some of the paint. This is the beauty of that product. Then I clean off my brush a little bit and do it all over the frame of the store, giving everything an aged, distressed look. And look at the final results, you guys. I just love how this store came out and now embodies that vision I was embracing of a little bit more character and age. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to subscribe and join the creative journey.